Once again, my name is Carlo with Biggest Little City Adventures. Today, I'm going to be talking about the TourTech Adventuro mod. So unboxing the mod, I've already taken it out of the bag, but you have the helmet, a TourTech bag, the instruction manual and two little spacers that will go if you take off the uh, peak and a neck roll um, that is removable uh, that cuts down on wind noise and also probably makes it a little bit warmer and an adventural mod. So getting into the Turotech adventural mod, a couple things you need to know. One, <clears throat> this is uh, a helmet that is made for tour tech, but is made by um, Schuberth. It is basically the same helmet as their E1, which is based off their C3 Pro. Okay, the main differences are, it has a different chin um, plastic piece here, but as you can see, it's the E1 underneath. It just has this to give it a little bit more sporty look. The peak is a little bit different. It is a little stiffer on the tour tech than the E1. Uh, the other main differences are it has a pair of rear vents, which um, in theory use the Venturi effect, Venturi effect that creates low pressure and sort of draws, draws air across the head to help with venting. It has a helmet strap, which I don't know how many people will be wearing uh, goggles with this type of helmet. If you do, just know it's going to hit your visor, so you're going to have to be taking, thinking about taking off your plastic taking off your peak, putting your peak back on to wear them. Uh, my recommendation would be get, you know, some cheap hundred dollar dual sport helmet if, uh, if that's what you're going to be going with. Um, so, but it does have the helmet strap in the back. Um, another note is Tour Tech does make an adventure, uh, adv another Adventuro and Venturo Carbon. Both of those helmets are made by Nex. They have a little bit different uh, helmet geometry. They are a little bit uh, lighter as well, but they're also not modular. So just know that the, the Adventuro, Adventuro Carbon, not the same helmet whatsoever um, as the Adventuro Mod, Mod being modular. Okay, getting into the modularity. So you have the same pin lock uh, system, the same part numbers are the same. Uh, the face shield, it has, uh, little levers um, on both sides, which I think is nice. My uh, show only has it on one. It has the little turbulators on the top that are supposed to break up the, uh, the wind to make it a little bit quieter. It does have a separate vent just, just for your goggles. So even if you are riding in cold weather, you could sort of keep the airflow going over the uh, pin lock system to, to keep it from fogging up. Then it has a separate chin vent, down is open. Uh, it's the same vent system as the E1 underneath. It just has this extra plastic piece to make it look cooler. The, uh, the visor has three different positions. So low, medium, and then high. Of note, you lock them down um, and then you push these little things back up on each side and it locks in place. When you do open it, it has, it's a little hard to get used to comparing to, you know, uh, the showy, but when you open it up, the peak moves with the visor. When you put it back down, the visor goes back into the position you had it. So that is nice. You're not constantly adjusting it. One of the complaints people have been having about the Tour Tech uh, mod and the E1, the, the uh, Schubert E1, is it doesn't lock. And you could see it didn't lock fully on this side. It locked on this side. It's not as positive locking as the showy Neotech. That's the reason the Neotech and the Neotech 2 are the number one selling modular helmet. They, they are built very well at a reasonable price. Okay, so you just gotta sort of play with it and you gotta bring these down sort of at the same time. Is it minute? Yes, but for a $700 helmet, $700 helmet should that be happening? I do not think so, in my opinion. Um, going to the inside, it has the ratchet strap, uh, Ratchet strap versus the D-ring. I like it. I'm still getting used to it. It has a very nice plush uh, padding. One of the things is that at the very top of the head, it doesn't have a lot of padding, just sort of a strip that goes on the top of your head. When I first got it, I didn't know if I was going to keep it or return it because it didn't feel as comfortable as my Neotech. 
Um, there is some hard, the hard helmet liner that does give a little bit inside there. Um, but one of the things I have to say is that after time, this will still probably fit better. My showy, after about five years, that the padding has broken down and it's gotten a lot looser um, and sort of slides around the head more than it should be. So I think over, over time, this will hold up more. Time will tell on long distance rides how it holds up. It is pre-wired with antennas for uh, um, Schubert's um, integrated communication system that's about two generations old and more expensive than next generation stuff right now. Um, the Shoei, or sorry, the Senna uh, 10U does also integrate with it. If you were going for an integrated communication system, that is what I would recommend. It plugs into the, uh, the factory antenna mounts. Um, it's all integrated inside the helmet. Some people have complained about it going into the rear. Um, it has the same, same uh, drop-down sun visor, and uh, Schubert has plenty of different colors and tints that you could order. Once again, uh, I am been I have been told that it's going to be the same part number for the internal visor and the, the actual visor. Um, so same mechanism here on the side. Okay. Um, the other nice thing is the peak does remove, so you just twist these unlocks on the side, and the peak removes. That's what those little spacers were in the box for, is they could go here, and then basically you could be riding with an E1 or C3 Pro with a weird chin and some back fence. Um, to put it back on, it actually is rather simple. Um, you just make sure it's in the unlock position. You sort of twist it around until you, you feel, feel it click. So it's easier if you stick it on, on top. Okay, so it goes back relatively easy. I've done it in maybe 10 seconds, just of course, not this take. Um, the thing is about this helmet is the, the Schuthberth, um, Schuberth E1s have recently gone sale. My guess is uh, they're coming out with a newer model uh, and they're heavily discounted up to 45, 50% off on Revzilla, uh, depending on the color you get. Um, I think the all black one is still around the $700 mark, which this one is approximately that way. But if you're getting any type of uh, different color, uh, you could save about $300 uh, in getting this nice quality modular adventure helmet. There's not a lot of quality modular adventure helmets on the market. Uh, two of the top competitors have to be made by the same company and it's basically the same helmet. The question right now is, is the back vent and a goggle strap worth $300 to you uh, for better airflow and a goggle strap that, to be honest, I doubt too many people will ever use, but uh, it does sort of look neat. And it has the different chin bar. So there's been com uh, comparisons in some magazines. They didn't use the same helmet size, so I would take those comparisons with a grain of salt. In those comparisons, they were using the Aventuro Mod in an extra large and the E1 in a, either a medium or large helmet. Uh, shell. They gave the heads up to this one just because the airflow. They did actually think it was a little bit quieter because the peak is a little stiffer than on the uh, Schubert. Um, so is it $300 better? Time will tell. My recommendation uh, would be go most likely with the E1 right now. Um, had, I got this one for about $6.89 using some Black Friday sales at my local CRBMW um, dealership. Um, but we'll see. I will give you an update when I have had some uh, miles on the bike with it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Once again, this is Carlo.